We're going to do an antacid. This is probably my favorite uh, terrestrial, if you will. It's, you know, ants, hoppers, beetles. I still would rather fish an ant than just about anything. This is a super simple ant. Uh, I'm going to use GSP. I use GSP thread for everything. It's gel spun. I'm using a 1180-14 Daiichi. Uh, the Daiichi's, whatever, it's whatever hook. I'm not a real hook Nazi. I just kind of find one I like the shape of. I'm going to use, but before I go on, the GSP, if you're using this gel spun, the GSP 50, what that stands for is the number of strands. It's kind of new. It's a couple, three years. Uh, usually used it in hair spinning for bigger flies. Now they've got it in 50, 100, 150. This stuff, the 50 is the equivalent of like 10 aught, but it's stronger than A monochord. The hardest thing getting used to it is that it doesn't stretch. And so you got to kind of get used to that right out of the gate. I'm going to be tying with, uh, I'm going to do a tan brown tan, which is two colors of super fine dubbing, whatever you like uh, for dubbing. I'm using super fine. And then I'll get to the other stuff. I want to show you something about dubbing. Probably one of the most common errors in all of dubbing is to use too much. If you've ever dubbed and you're going along and you put the dubbing on the thread and all of a sudden, whoom, out goes this dog leg. It's not hooked to your thread. It's telling you that you did it wrong. And I'll show you a simple way to do it. If you let go of your dubbing, I don't know if we'll be able to pick that up on the camera or not, but see how it dropped to the ground? You take it and it you let it go and it just drops. If you've picked your dubbing out lightly, the, the key to dubbing is that each one of these strands is supposed to wrap around the thread. And if you've picked it out right and it's nice and loose and just enough, if you let it go, it'll float. And I can pick it if I catch it. And if you've got too much or if you even spin it too tight, you let it go, you'll see that stuff drops to the ground. So if you pick it out nice and light, and you let it go in front of you, if it's floating, yeah, got it. That's enough dubbing. And so what that'll tell you is that each little fiber is going around the hook, uh, or the thread, excuse me, one at a time. And this is gonna have a pretty, if you look at an ant underwater, from the water's view looking up, you see they've, they're really segmented. They've got three distinct orbs or little round spots. There's probably a technical name for that. We'll start with the abdomen. I know that one. Uh, and they're really distinct when you look at them on the water. It's, it's like bulb, 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 three of them. And the legs are not so, not so much. But it's the key, I think, to most ant patterns. And that's one of the things that differentiates this fly from a lot of them, is it has all three of them. So it's kind of a, just a, you're just sitting here building up the bulk. The back one I make the biggest, and I just keep going back and forth, Ooh. breaking my thread. You can't break this thread as I break it. You can't break it unless you hit your hook point, which I just did. I think that's the first time in my life I've ever broke my thread. Somebody's going to say, did you hear that? That's not true. All right, back to dubbing. With this GSP, it's really hard to break it. If you nick your... And that's how you cut it. You don't try to cut it with your scissors. You kind of, you wedge your scissors into it. And I just clicked my hook point and broke the thread right there. But we're just going to build this back and forth. I'm going from front to back and you're building a pyramid so that the bulb and the back, the back bulb of the ant pattern, uh, that's the most critical, I think. It, it helps, the heaviest part of your hook is the back of the hook. And so it helps, the bigger this bulb is, it helps it float the, the fly. And it gives that real distinct three shapes, the three bulbs that you're going to need. This is a size 14. I tie this in, this ant in size, actually I do it as big as a 12. We've got a lot of those cinnamon, those honey ants around here, everywhere. And back in the east, they get a lot of carpenter ants, those giant black ones. And those things can be a solid 10. And so, obviously, there, if I'm doing a dark one, I do black, tan, black, or something ambery for the middle, that kind of like this brownie, you know, it'd be a black body here. I never go 
much lighter than this, but because there's always that chocolatey and almost amber color to that their body, uh, the middle section. But that's key too, is to have those three different colors, or two different colors actually, but it's broke up and that's what makes the segment that much more distinct. <clears throat> now I'm using metallic braid. It's from Good Broad. The bad news is, is that they quit making it. Any flat mylar, I like this one because it's kind of holographic. Um, and this is the underwing. And I'm going to tie this in, tie it in a little long. Whenever you use this flat braid stuff, it, it has a tendency, it's going to all fray out. It's going to get all picked out. But tie it a little long when you're first set. So I'm way back here. We're going to trim it in a second. But I was talking earlier about this thread not, not uh, stretching. If you're used to using any thread where you do what's called an anchor wrap, where you're you do one straight, one over, and you stretch your thread to set your materials. This it doesn't work with this stuff. So you, you've got to get used to having nice, clean, tight wraps on each one. And you might want to drop a half hitch in it until you get used to it because it will, it'll back off. It's so slick, it's unbelievable. Cut this a little long because we're going to go right back over top of it. Don't just try to cut it right tight like that so it's all trimmed off. See, this stuff's already picked out a little bit. I put my scissors, I take the bottom blade, butt the back of the hook, and just cut it flush right there. Done deal. So, <clears throat> do, 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 do. now I'm going to take the, dark, the darker brown, and same thing, but this one's going to be a small segment. Basically, all this one does is covers up the material that we just put on that little bit of uh, metallic braid. And I said, you can, I, I don't know, you can probably find that in some shops still. Good Broad quit making all their fly tan materials a couple years ago. I like to turn this over and just make sure that I'm covering everything up. Come right back. You can see it's a really small little bulb there. And then the front one will be bigger. So now I'm going to go with some short fine deer hair. Short fine is really hard to, to come by. You got to look around for it. What you want is a very distinct line. Just like when you're spinning deer hair or any type of hair work, you're looking for the, the clean line here and a good distance between that darker line and the skin. What that tell, all this hair from here down is hollow. Everything from here up is solid. So you can't really compress this hair up here. It's really hard to work with, like doing elk hair caddis or anything where you need the hair to flare. So then I'm going to take a pretty substantial amount of this. I'm just going to cut it. This isn't, by the way, isn't great hair, and I'm going to show you why. And I kind of use this for a reason so you could see it. But I'm going to put this in this hair comb right here. I'm going to put it in the comb, and I'm going to pick it out. And what you're going to see is that. That is the fur. I don't know if you can see that very well, but this is what causes your flies not to spin and not to have the hair grab real well. That hair, all that fur, there's three types of hair. There's fur, directional hair, and guard hair. The black-tipped hair is your guard hairs. The ones that you pick out, the kind of junk that goes with it, the next one are the directional hairs, the ones without the black tips. And the, and the stuff underneath is the fur. The fur is insulation. It's just trying to create air spaces. The more fur it is, the later season deer it is, and the harder it is to work with. But I wanted to have a piece that when I pulled it out, you could see lots of that under fur and it's critical that you comb it out well whatever you use if you don't you don't have to comb it if however you do it make sure you get all that stuff out if it's if there's a bunch of fur left in there you go to tie it, it builds bulk it won't flare as well and it won't secure around the hook as well just give it a quick stack by the way simple technique most people know it if you get static building your stackers, which is a pain in the butt because you stack it and you go like that and it's all inside there, take a dryer sheet, just run it inside there, run it inside the tube, in and out it goes, piece of cake. So now you should have a pretty even tipped hair here. You're going to want it to end up being as long or slightly longer than this, this flash underneath here. And I'm going to show you something about and this is how I do all my wings and all my collars it's a little different than how a lot of people do it and I'll show you how to do a perfect elk hair head at the same time 
instead of tying this, lengthening it and finding it the length you want and then trimming it with your scissors, go ahead and cut it just a little bit longer than you want it on your first cut. So I'm already done right there. So then I'm going to take this, I'm going to set it, and if you're doing an elk, I'll do a little bit longer. If you're doing an elk hair, you just pull it like that and you'd have a perfect elk hair caddis. No trimming with your scissors, nothing. So you just set it in there, give it two nice tight wraps, third one goes through. Now you got a nice fluffy wing sitting there. You work through it, you know everything. I went over my head, the little hair, because I'm going to put dubbing over top of this one. But you can see I've got this big fluffy wing. And now if I was doing an elk hair, I, I wouldn't have to trim it. You'd make it a little bit longer, you'd pull your thread, it'd flare it all out just like a, you were spinning deer hair. You'd have a perfect head. You don't have to mess with that second step of trimming it. Now I'm just going to go back and repeat step one. Same thing, I'm going to build that pyramid shape. I'm going to go back and forth, building it up. But I'm going to end with my thread in the middle of the fly so that I can get the uh, legs on there. Start right at the head, just building this, building the bulk to the front half here, the front third, I mean. I don't think you can make, the, the limiting factor to making these bulbs is how, when it starts to fall off the hook. You know, you'll, you'll do one or two if it's too big and you just, if it starts falling off, you know, your, your pyramid's building and they slide one way or the other, that means you've went too far, but if you can, I don't think you can make these things too big personally. It just adds to that illusion that the fish is seen from the underneath. <clears throat> then I'm going to take a pair of centipede legs. I, I love these, these verniculated legs that have come out with they're not new by any stretch of the imagination, but they've got them now in these really small sizes. And this is the Montana flies centipede legs in the small. What I do is I take a, I don't worry about wasting a little bit of this stuff. It's a lot easier to work. I, I double it over. I've got two legs about an inch and a half long. That's twice as much as I need. But we're gonna help drive the economy here. I put them both on top. And I'm going to waste a little of this. I'd, I'd much rather have too much than too little right here, so I, I can trim them off. It's hard to grow them in the hook here. So I got them both on top like that. You simply, I've got two turns of thread. Not, you don't have to really cinch down rubber legs. You, they'll stay on there if they're just a little bit of tension. Then just take the back side, stretch it a little bit, bring it off to the side, stretch this side, bring it off to the side. Just look at them. I mean, wherever, is that where you want it? Fine. If it is, just give it a little bit of a cinch down. I pulled that, make sure you don't roll them over. I rolled that when I pulled down. Then go in front of it. I just got, I got three turns through the legs. Go in front of it and whip off right, right in front of the legs. So you don't distort your, don't distort your uh, front bulb there. And then just kind of look at it. See where you want your legs off. To the, you can still move them a little bit. And then trim the front one shorter. That one's a little shorter, maybe. Yeah, it's just about right. And what I do is I bring these back together like that, go right to the tip of the hair, and I cut them. And that usually gives me just about exactly the length I want. Then go underneath here if you've got any. I had one little piece of that gold that was down on the side I didn't care for. And that's the antacid. The key to this thing is. It floats like a cork, first of all. It's the, probably the best ant pattern I've ever fished, but the key is that it floats. You can see it, and it's deer hair, so you don't end up with it. I'm not a big CDC fan because once it's slimed, it's slimed. With this stuff, you can keep this fly floating for hours. It's unbelievable. You dress it up, and it gives a great silhouette. I don't know if we can see that from here or not, but I'll... So you can see the bottom. It's got one, two, three. It's got the biggest one in the back, a brown one in the middle, which is darker, so contrast, so you're seeing the bulbs. You got the legs out to the side. Have no idea what that gold flash does, but I know it works better with it than without it. Uh, probably just the reflection of the wings when they're looking down. And then, of course, it's riding on that hair. It's virtually impossible to sink it.